Good morning, SPU community. Today is election day, and this is a day and a season really that I have been praying about for a while. Um, I know that on our campus for students, faculty, and staff, we are all across the board when it comes to uh, thinking about who we're voting for, which propositions are really important to us, where do we discern and, um, and really seek out what do we really believe or how do we want to use our voice in this space. Um, and so today we, we find ourselves really in a place of waiting. Some of us have already cast our votes. Some of us are still going to be doing that today. Uh, but we are paying attention to uh, the election results. Um, what does that look like? What does that mean for us today? And so I think on our campus, I'm sure there are some people who are super excited and um, are feeling joy about a lot of different things. And at the same time, I'm sure that there are some of us that wow, it's just been a rough year. <laughs> and there is a lot that we are holding and carrying. Some of that may include anxiety, fear, frustration, um, anger, even in the midst of that. And so I really do believe that God wants to remind us that we're not alone. We not only have each other, but we have God uh, who is with us um, to care for us, to comfort us, uh, to be our helper. And so I wanted to start out this morning reading from John chapter 14 and chapter 15. And this passage really reminds us that it is the Holy Spirit who comes and indwells us and grows us and comforts us and is our helper. And then it is the call to us then to remain and to abide uh, with the Lord so that God can grow God's fruit out of us, even in times that are challenging, even in times where um, we're holding a lot, even when it feels like it's too much. Um, this is a reminder that we're not alone. So Jesus said to the disciples, and I believe that God says this to us today. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And then Jesus goes on to say to the disciples, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. And so regardless of what season we're in or what we're feeling or experiencing today, I believe that there's an invitation to abide, to remain, to press into God and to press into our community. And so it's just a privilege to be able to be here with you all and to have uh, Tim, our ASSP Vice President of Ministries with us uh, today, we just wanted to share a little bit about how we're journeying through this and invite you into some spaces where you can be present with others and uh, where you might have some opportunities to also be open to what God might do in you. Tim? Yeah, uh, once again, thanks for being here. So glad um, that you could join us this morning. Um, and as Chaplain Lisa said, I think there's different things that we all have been kind of reflecting on in this season and uh, really seeking um, to ask questions and understand. Um, and something for myself um, is, is kind of looking and saying, hey, um, this, while it is election week, is actually the culmination of several experiences and events um, over the last period of like last season, um, the last several months, several years. And so um, with that, I think that, um, as Chaplain said, there can be a lot of emotions and a lot of different things that we're bringing into this week. Um, something for myself um, that I wanted to share with you that I've been reflecting on um, has actually been um, processing, hey, what does it mean to hold anger and frustration in this space and hold anger and frustration um, in this time um, as we sit in the waiting, as we are processing what's going on? And so um, I wanted to share this morning a scripture with you from the book of Habakkuk. Um, Kind of what I felt really um, uh, highlights a lot of the questions that I'm asking um, and a lot of the things that I've kind of been reflecting on and thinking. So um, reading from chapter one, verse two in Habakkuk, it says, how long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? 
Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice fails to prevail. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. And in this season, uh, I, this, I think this passage has really, really resonated with me because I feel that I've been having an experience in the church um, that I don't think I'm alone in. Um, the church this season, um, while being a great place uh, to continue um, to be filled up, um, to be revitalized just in our walk of faith, uh, even virtually engaging with our church communities, um, I feel like there's been a message that stood out above all else. Above all else. Um, the, the church, I, the circles that I have been a part of, I think have really zoned in on this idea of God being sovereign. And uh, while I do at the core of my beliefs believe this to be true, that God is sovereign and that uh, it's, it's my faith in him and my faith in his guiding hand over what's happening in our world that ultimately gives me hope. Um, I also feel like this message has been, has been continued to be preached, continued to be said to the point where it feels a little bit disingenuous. Uh, for me, it's been a season of reflecting and saying, you know, I, yes, this is true. God is sovereign, but I'm feeling all of these other things that aren't being talked about in the church. That I, 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 I'm feeling like the message is getting is getting a little bit changed to say, hey, you know, because God is sovereign, you don't need to be angry. Because God is sovereign, you don't need to be frustrated. Because God is sovereign, you don't need to be anxious. And while I continue to look and have faith in this God who is sovereign, I also am questioning and saying, well, what do I do with these emotions that I'm experiencing and emotions that um, I'm really processing through? And as I was reflecting with our all ministry council, with Chaplain Lisa, as we were thinking about praying, I don't think I'm the only person um, experiencing this as we're going through this season. And so um, for me, as I've continued to um, really reflect and say, what does it look like to deal with frustration? Um, I, I've been looking and saying, you know what, what would it look like for me um, to get up and move? to get up and move. I, I, I think right now I'm in a season where I'm at my desk every day for hours. And um, for me, when I am looking at things and seeing the world and experiencing things that are making me angry and frustrated, I, I think everybody knows that feeling If you're frustrated to the bone. Um, I've seen the benefit in the, uh, in the help and the reflection and the processing that I can gain from getting up and moving. And while I won't claim that this is going to be the thing for everybody, I do think that it's something um, that uh, is genuinely very useful and has been used for generations uh, of Christians to help you know, kind of process things that are happening. And so um, I just want to give an encouragement to you as you're reflecting, maybe you're in a spot as me where you're sitting here and saying, what do I do with these emotions? Like I, I want to continue to fall and center on the idea that God is sovereign, but I don't know what to, I don't know what to do with these emotions. Um, my encouragement this morning is, is, is movement, uh, is to get up and move. And so for the last several months, I've been working with all ministry council, um, who is a fantastic team of all of our ministry coordinators at SPU to say, what would it look like to provide spaces for students to get up and move? If you're on campus, around campus, um, even off campus, uh, we are, are hoping to provide resources to you that you can use to center and reflect during this season as you're processing um, anger and frustration and a variety of other emotions that um, you might be encountering right now. And so I want to encourage you uh, and give an invitation to you that if you're on campus or around campus, we are going to have prayer labyrinths set up on campus. Now, uh, many of you maybe have never used a prayer labyrinth before. And because of that, we are going to be providing um, helpful instructions online as well as in person as you go to encounter these. Um, they will be set up the week of November 2nd to 9th. So one of them is set up today in the Eaton Breezeway. The other one is set up in Tiffany Loop and will be set up for the entire week. And so um, between those two things, hopefully you can find a moment to maybe get up and walk and go out and experience uh, the prayer labyrinth and walk through some reflection and some prayer um, and just continue to bring the things you're feeling um, to the center of these labyrinths as you help center yourself on God to then walk back out into the world and maybe continue to encounter um, kind of the post-election um, vibes and feelings we're going to have as a community. And so uh, I encourage you in this season, if you can find a way to get up and move, whether that's, uh, I love high intensity uh, interval workouts. Um, I love things that have quick explosive motion because for me, that's a way I can process anger. Um, but for some of you, it might just be um, just getting out of your chair, getting out of your desk. My encouragement to you this morning is maybe find a space where you can move um, as a way to help process um, the things that you're looking at in the world and those questions that you're asking like Habakkuk of God, where are you amidst this? Uh, and so that's my encouragement to you this morning. Uh, but obviously not everybody's feeling anger and frustration. I think that there, like Chaplain Lisa said, there's people that are feeling many other things. So uh, Chaplain Lisa, what 
other things might students be feeling and what other things are we encouraging students uh, and faculty and staff and uh, all those in our community as we approach this week. Yeah, you know, it has been quite a year. So I think the election is definitely upon us. At the same time, we have been going through COVID-19. And I think that that has changed life for a lot of us. Um, for me, the community that I'm used to being connected to, um, I haven't been able to go down and visit, to be honest. Um, we had a loss in our family. My grandmother just passed away. And so I'm also experiencing just the the being separated from people that I'm normally able to be connected with. And, uh, and so there's some like grief and there's loss with that. I think um, as I've talked with different students and even some of our faculty and staff, there are different kinds of losses and disappointments that we've been experiencing this year that we didn't expect would be what we would be, you know, kind of carrying and holding. So we're holding the election stuff, we're holding COVID-19 stuff. Um, at the same time, you know, like, the weather is starting to change, which for some of us that really impacts even how we feel physically, right? And so I think there's just, there's a variety of pieces that um, we are just where we are. And I think what I would love to be able to say to our community is wherever you are, God is with you in that space. And we also wanna be with you to come alongside you. So whether you're holding and you're waiting and um, anticipating the election results, whether you are going through your own, own places of being sad about something or holding your own griefs and losses, um, I think that there is an invitation. Um, one of the things that has been really meaningful to me uh, that I've been able to do, I actually really love retreat sites. And at a good handful of retreat sites on the coast, uh, they actually have Stations of the Cross that are set up. And we're going to have the privilege of having it set up actually in Martin Square this whole week. And so um, there is something about being able to be reminded that Jesus came, you know, incarnated, like took on human flesh, like knows what we experience. And the idea of the Stations of the Cross or journeying through the cross is being able to be reminded that Jesus knows our suffering, that the places that we're hurting, um, that we're not alone. And so as you journey from station to station, there are various pieces of art uh, from all different backgrounds. And there is a uh, a prayer uh, that is guided with each uh, station so that you can um, have a moment just to reflect and to slow down and to be honest, like being present in another place with something that might be guiding you and leading you um, might be something that can minister to your soul in this space. Um, another thing that I also do is prayer beads. Um, this has been something that has been kind of a staple for me. I meet to pray with uh, some people from my church twice a week in the mornings, and, um, and we spend some time um, really being focused uh, and grounded back into things that remind us of who God is, but also remind us of who we are in the Lord and that we are created in the image of God and we are known and we're seen and we're loved. And so for you, there may be various like spiritual rhythms or um, opportunities for you to actually be grounded and then to also be reminded that you're not alone. So I would love to actually invite um, our whole community. We have been doing some mindfulness practices and we have two more that are coming up. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, um, we're gonna be meeting at 1230 and you can actually find us on Instagram Live. Uh, Dr. Joel Jin and I have been leading our community through mindfulness practices. And so part of that is actually just being able to ground yourself and to be focused and so whether you are a person of faith or a person on a different journey uh, these mindfulness practices um, allow us to slow down they allow us to come back to the core of who we are and they focus our heart and minds um, on things that are life-giving for us and in seasons like this uh, for some of us that might be something that could be really transformative and could carry us and also remind us that we're not alone that there are people who um, who see us who love us who know us um, and want to walk with us um, if you are needing people uh, today, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, we're actually doing some virtual drop-ins, uh, Zoom drop-ins. So you can find the link on our webpage. That's going to be from 1230 to 130 every day. So you can uh, drop in there. Um, if you actually want to see a person, we will also be around campus. So those are also listed on our website. We want you to know that like you don't you don't have to stay isolated if you're feeling isolated. If you need to see somebody, come connect. You can even reach out to us in email for all of our campus pastors, uh, university ministry team members. Like, we're here for you. Like, if you need to grab a cup of coffee, let us know. Like, we can go for walks. Like, uh, we want you to know that you're not alone in this space. Um, 
So I think, you know, as we journey together today, you know, election day, it's, it is, it's one day, it's an important day, but it's also just one day. Like there is a greater journey that we get to be on together. And the reality is that the election, um, we will be processing probably for the next week or even longer on our campus. Um, and so next uh, Tuesday for chapel, we actually are gonna do a table talk uh, with some people on our campus to just share how we're processing through post-election. For some of us, we're gonna be super excited about the results that came out and we will be celebrating and mindful of, of our other you know, siblings on campus. Um, and some of us are gonna be in a place where, oh my gosh, the results were just so hard for us and we're disappointed, whether it's the presidential candidate or whether it's propositions that were on the table that were really important to us. Um, and so there's going to be opportunities, I think, for us to be in community together, to be mindful of each other, uh, but most importantly, I think, to be reminded that we're not alone. And so um, there are just different tools. We want you uh, to be connected, to know that we are here with you. So if you haven't gotten a chance yet, um, this is kind of our self-care uh, list of opportunities for you to engage. They're all listed on our website. So you can go to our UMIN website um, at SPU um, and check out how you can get connected. All of the links are there so that you can join us even for game night tonight at 6 p.m. Um, there's just a lot of ways that our student leaders and our staff here want to come alongside you uh, and just be present. Uh, so we invite you into those spaces. Um, as I close our time today, uh, the Reverend Dr. Brenda Salter McNeil um, has shared this book with us, which I'm really excited about. And there is a, a poem, a reflection, a prayer that I wanted to uh, close our time with today. Uh, it was written by the Bishop Ken Untener, and he captures the life and spirit of Archbishop Osco, Oscar Romero. And um, what I appreciate about this is he gives us this picture and this vision of not just like a moment like an election, but really the journey that we're invited into. And so um, I'd love to close our time with this. He says, it helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. He then goes on to say, we plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that, prov that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something, and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are the workers, not master builders ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. And so God, as we go from this place today, um, would you meet us? Whatever we are feeling, whatever we are experiencing, God, I pray that you would remind us that we are not alone. God, I pray that we would be kind to ourselves that we would engage in practices and opportunities of self-care so that you can remind us how loved we are and how important we are and that we matter. And God, at the same time, um, I pray that you would continue to move us along in this journey together as a community at SPU. God, I pray that we would uh, not only offer ourselves to you, but offer ourselves to one another and that that might come in a very small kindness or in a big kindness, God, whatever that may be. But I pray that you would grow our hearts, um, our love, our concern, um, our unity with one another in the body of Christ. So God, as we go from this place today, would you uphold us? Would you have your hand of spiritual protection and care over us? Would your Holy Spirit comfort us in the places that we need comfort? And God, would you be our great provider? 
and the one who waters the seeds of hope that are planted in our hearts, God. So God, today, may we offer ourselves to you and to one another. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we um, go from this place, we want to invite you into a time of musical worship and prayer that's going to be led by our worship team. Um, I'm so grateful that we can be in a space of singing together and reflecting and praying and knowing that there are a lot of other people that are singing and praying with us. And so we invite you to join us today. Welcome everyone to chapel and let's take a posture of worship. Feel free to sing along and or just sit in silence and take in the lyrics and let's worship God together.
song says that we are fearfully and wonderfully and beautifully made by you. You have created us, but sometimes we just don't feel your love, God. And sometimes we wonder why the world is spinning around the way that the world wants to. Sometimes we wonder why things that we want this way are not going that way. Father God, one thing that we know for sure is that you are still with us. fact that you have created us fearfully and wonderfully and beautifully, God. And although we are confused and although we feel lonely and although we don't feel your love all the time, we know for a fact that you always are present with us, God. So as we continue with worship, I just pray. 
pray that you would show your love to us, show your face to us, be present with us. We welcome you, God, and we want you here. So as we worship, and as we worship virtually through the screen, now God, I still pray that you would be present through the screens, in their rooms, wherever they are. God, as we continue singing, I just pray that your presence would be felt in this place. Be with us, God. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll hear you. Sometimes I won't. But this I know with all my heart, with all my soul. Sing, sometimes I feel you. Sometimes, sometimes I feel you. Sometimes I don't Sometimes I hear you Sometimes I won't Darkness. 
Sometimes we don't feel you, although sometimes we don't hear you, God. We know for a fact that you are always with us. And God, I just pray that your presence would purify us now. Your presence would be, would burn us like fire and just purify us so that we would be children of your God that are faithful to you, God. And God, if this is the place where you want us to be, Father God, take us there. If you want us to worship you through a screen in our rooms, God, take us there. And we'll worship you. And we'll continue to do so until you come, God. And as we continue with worship, God, I just pray that you would pour your spirit down to us. The altar's where you meet us Take me there, take me there If you're looking for an offering It's right here, my life is here And I'll be your living Sacrifice for you You're a fire refiner I want to be consumed, I want to be tried by fire, purified 
you make whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Purify. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. If your glory wants to come in, let it fall. We want it all, Feel the fire is consuming. Fill this place, set it ablaze, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're the fire, the finer. I want to be consumed. I want to be tried. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, go in peace. Um, God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship together. 
we thank you for um, the community that comes even though it's through a screen um, we pray that with everything that's going on right now you will be with us um, and that you will use us um, we are open for you 